and really sort of killing the remnants of that license raj or what some call the license raj 2.0 in things like land spectrum and others have called it now the resource raj where government still has um, discretion where, where rules are opaque sure then even a small tweaking of the rules can benefit a corrupt bureaucrat politician and business person absolutely absolutely and i think it opens up the opportunity to really create a social fabric that um, allows you equality of opportunity and the ability to for the youth of india particularly to uh, uh, aspire to jobs that are competitive that are sustainable that meet market needs allows you then to focus fiscal resources on the truly disadvantaged and the vulnerable to provide social protection schemes that uh, address really uh, disadvantaged and vulnerable sections of society whether it's the aged whether it's uh, those who are incapable of working uh, those who still suffer from the stigma of india's past history of caste and communal divisions i think it allows you then to really focus on the truly vulnerable in society and address those issues but if the entire weight of opportunity is put on social policy and on social protection that is difficult for any nation irrespective of how wealthy or rich it is to bear and certainly india can't afford to to entirely base uh, the whole notion of creating opportunities on just social policy i think a policy of growth of creating jobs of creating the conditions under which the private sector will create jobs is going to be dramatically important for india's future so is it fair to say as i think many observers are saying that perhaps in the zeal to capitalize on these rich resources that came into the state's coffers that perhaps they overdid the social policy and didn't i think as you said in your talk invest in the future but rather mortgage the present generation by by creating this sort of ov this overhang this fiscal overhang which we're now dealing with well um india of course is not unique in doing that uh, almost every country that comes into you know it's like a dutch disease as we economists call it a uh, dutch disease problem where uh, a sudden influx of resources whether they come from tax revenues or from north sea oil uh, create the opportunities for misuse of those resources and i have to say that they were all and and these are all well intentioned policies but i think one needs to think about not just the immediate short run and the immediate problems that uh, one solves through these policies but you really have to look at the longer term consequences not just the ability to pay but the kind of society that you are creating do you want a society where people can get 100 days of employment and build uh, small rural roads or do you want to create a network of roads that then lead to greater commerce greater industry more jobs more uh, urbanization more schools and create the jobs that would then employ these people in truly productive uh, pursuits rather than simply being dependent on 100 days of employment now if you can create a transition between one to the other then of course that's great but if it is not clear how the transition is going to happen and you just expect growth to fall from heaven as we know from history it doesn't not too many countries can sustain long periods of growth and typically those that manage to sustain it only manage to do it for 15 20 25 years very few countries with perhaps now the most recent exception of china have been able to sustain those high rates of growth so that's a that's a fair warning to india that complacency uh, will not uh, lead to the kind of growth that india wants and needs as we are coming towards the end of our our time and this this um, fascinating conversation um if you were sort of to, to gaze into your crystal ball uh, shaker as you look forward i i know that you're optimistic as i am but um how would you rate the odds if you can i i can use a different metaphor where we're going to be 5 10 or uh or th or 30 years from now looking ahead one generation are we going to be at least um making a big dent in poverty if not it not removing this that scourge are we going to be 
a richer country? Are we going to be, are we going to be stuck, mired in a, what some economists call a middle income trap where we reach a certain point and then we sort of taper off? If you'd asked me how I felt about tomorrow, the next few months, that would have been a tough question to answer. But the question you've asked is very easy to answer. I'm absolutely certain that uh, India will make a huge dent in poverty in the next, certainly within the next generation, but even before that. And that uh, with this demographic transition, with just the minimum of the right policies that we could follow, I have absolutely no doubt that it is going to occupy and, 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 and be at its rightful place. Um, as you know, the projections for India are that India will be the second largest economy in the world. Already in PPP terms, it is one of the largest. Even at market prices, the, Indian, the size of the Indian economy is the same as the Canadian economy today. Uh, if we were to do it in PPP terms, then the size of the Indian economy is substantially greater than the Canadian economy. Uh, uh, so that I think the, the potential is there, the ingredients are all there, the wise men and women are all there. Uh, it's a matter of just putting it together.